Hello and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and thanks to all the subscribers. This is Java with Ali. <laughs> so today we are going to continue on. We're going to have a brief look back at what we covered last week so I can talk through some stuff and also some logic errors and then we're going to continue on with producer consumer. I'm trying to keep these videos short based on your feedback um, and also get through a pretty large topic. <laughs> so um, today we're just going to talk a little bit about the synchronization of the shared array test first. So we ran it from here and then we have simple array here. So you can see the lines that I've added into the add method, which are important. So in the synchronize add method, we print messages to the console indicating the progress of threads as they execute this method in addition to performing the actual operations required to insert a value in the array we do this so that the messages will be printed in the correct order allowing us to see whether it, whether it's synchronized or not by comparing the previous unsynchronized example so we continue to output messages from synchronized blocks in later examples for demonstration purposes also important to note because i mentioned this last week as well this example uses the thread uh, method sleep, which we'll also be using in this next example um, to emphasize the unpredictability of thread scheduling. So you should never call sleep while holding a lock on a real application. <laughs> so keep the duration of synchronized statements as short as possible while maintaining a needed synchronization. This minimizes the wait time for blocked threads, avoid performing um, input output lengthy calculations and operations that do not require synchronization while holding a lock. Also important. So here we have, what we're going to print out is the array, uh, the value and the position <laughs> in the array. So here we have our value and our position. And we also have the right index, which is next right index, which is printed on our console. And also, um, as per last week, we use the keyword synchronized and synchronized here as well. Um, and if you're unsure, it's up on GitHub as well. So this week, we're going to look at producer consumer and producer consumer relationships in a producer consumer relationship, the producer portion of an application generates data and stores it in a shared object. So it's like if you're sitting at a desk across the way from somebody and you have a box of chocolates. <laughs> um, let's say one person buys chocolates and the other person eats some chocolates and the roles are reversed every so often. Anyway, long story short, it's from the same box. So it's the same object every time. So the producer um, portion of the application generates the data and stores it in a shared object. And the consumer portion of the application reads data from the shared object. So one produces, the other consumes basically. <laughs> so produces data and also stores it and consumes it. So the consumer reads the data which is important later on. The producer-consumer um, relationship then allows us to separate and identify what work needs to be done um, versus the tasks that are actually being done. So a good example is print spooling, <laughs> which I've mentioned previously in previous um, videos as well. So if we have a printer and the printer, um, you're sending jobs to the printer to be printed, Although, although a printer might not be available when you print the application, um, you can still complete the print task. So um, for those of you who worked in industry doing other things, there's um, job schedulers that you can run tasks and send tasks to be completed um, and it can be completed before the application takes it. So basically you have a producer thread which is a buffer. So in a multi-threaded producer-consumer relationship, a producer thread generates data, places it in a shared object called a buffer. For those of you who used to uh, maybe a bit 
maybe you might be a little bit older. I remember the word buffer <laughs> because you'd be buffering an application. <laughs> this comes into this uh, word now makes sense because it's the shared object. A producer thread generates data and places it in a shared object called a buffer. Um, a consumer reads data from that buffer and then the relationship requires synchronization to ensure that the values produced and consumed properly. So if all operations are mutable, which means changeable, um, data that's shared by multiple threads, i.e. data in the buffer, must be guarded with a lock to prevent corruption, which we know already, and which I've already spoken about time working with access databases and you had to lock it <laughs> so that let's say if I change anything in the database nobody else could etc etc so this is similar to this concept that you have to lock the application so operations on the data on the buffer data shared by a producer and consumer thread are also state dependent and that's important because if the buffer is in a not full state, the producer may produce. If the buffer is not empty state, the consumer may consume. <laughs> so only if it's only if the buffer is in the correct state. Logic errors then can occur if they don't synchronize across multiple threads manipulating shared data, shared mutable data. So an example would be a producer thread writes the numbers 1 through 10 in a shared buffer, a single memory location. So your single box of chocolates. <laughs> um, a shared between two threads. So a single memory location shared between th two threads being um, it being shared. And then if it's written and um, read at the same time. It can cause logic errors. So each value the producer thread writes to a shared buffer must be consumed exactly once by the consumer thread. So therefore data can be lost or it can be garbled with. If the producer produces new data into the shared buffer before the consumer is able to read the previous data, it's already full. Our box of chocolates are full. <laughs> So, um, well, not full, maybe that, that's the wrong term, but you get my um, idea behind it. <laughs> so it's a shared object is the main point. Um, to emphasize the point, the producer and consumer threads in the example, each sleep for random intervals up to th three seconds before performing the tasks. So first we've got an interface um, which is buffer. <laughs> so we have buffer is our interface right here. And we have two methods that we need to implement then in another class. So we have, and it throws interrupted exception for both. So one is put and one is get. If you're um, unsure about put and get, it's put is putting onto a stack and get is getting off the stack. <laughs> so um, the program consists of the interface buffer, and then we have classes producer here, which uses block input, and consumer here, which uses block and get. And we also have unsynchronized buffer, which is here, which is implementing our buffer interface. If you're unsure about interfaces, I've got a video on that as well. <laughs> so we have to implement our methods in buffer as an interface we're only basically when okay interface the word itself can be i'm going to interface with you i'm going to talk to someone else i am going to be able to communicate between things <laughs> so people use the word interface being i'm going to interface with the customer um that is also a thing that people say <laughs> Anyway, so we have producer, consumer, buffer, unsynchronized um, buffer, and then we have our test where our main our main entry point is, our main thread. So we're just going to talk through some stuff first. So initially, we also have to consider how logic errors can occur when they don't synchronize. And then we have our interface, 
and then we also have our consumer so with our consumer if we go here they're almost or they're very similar programs actually so if i go up the top we just take our secure random um we implement runnable the minute you type in implements runnable there's a little nice trick with um eclipse if you're using eclipse as the ide you can right click and just say add on implemented methods and it will automatically add an empty uh, method stub for run which is nice it saves you writing <laughs> so we have our um we call our thread method sleep again only for demonstration purposes <laughs> for three seconds so we call the method sleep in both producer and consumer to emphasize how multi-threaded applications, it can be un unpredictable when each thread will perform its task and how for how long um, the task will be performed when it has a processor to perform the task. So normally these thread scheduling issues are beyond the control of the Java developer. So, but in this program, we're just using a really simple um, values 1 to 10 to the buffer and consumer reads 10 from the buffer and adds each to a variable sum without the sleep method and if the producer executes first um the producer would likely complete its task before consumer got a chance had got, in, got a chance to execute it so if the consumer executed first it would likely have garbage data 10 times um then be, then terminate before the producer could produce the first real value okay re really, it's like it would just be too fast for it <laughs> so we got to synchronize it use the sleep in this application as well as we're going through it so with consumer then we have our constructor here we again we have our secure random we call buffer being the interface it has a little eye here to show that it's the interface uh why is it so small um funny okay anyway we have our constructor which is consumer which automatically overrides the default so every class has a default constructor um and by writing it we're overriding it um so then we have our shared buffer going into it and obviously um then using the private variable, assigning it to the private variable within this class. We have our override methods here, run, which when you type in implements runnable, you can just add your own implemented methods. We use our sum here, again, just a simple for loop to count through it. Our sleep, oh, our sleep, um, which for demonstration is only for demonstration purposes. Our blocking get, um, which we'll come to in a second in our unsynchronized buffer. And then we print it out. And of course we catch it as an example, um, catch it as an exception even, and we print out consumer read um, values as well. I'm gonna say that. Then we go on to our unsynchronized buffer, um, which is here. And we have our blocking put, which is going to print out every time that this is called, um, which in the consumer, we know that it's called within a, a loop. So it's going to be called this amount of times. <laughs> and then we have um, our producer rights and we take our value from whatever blocking put. So in this case, um, in producer, we're going to take our count, which is one. Um, less than or equal to turn um, and we increment we step through it so we increment through it and we produce that out on the screen and then we assign our value to the buffer we this we also have our blocking get here and it basically functions in a similar way but we we read it from the buffer so we produce and then we read from the buffer. So we have our three, our three kind of um, producer, buffer, and consumer. And then we look at seeing how 
This is called within producer. We write it to buffer and then we read it from buffer here. So we also have then our producer, which is pretty much, I just said, it was pretty much similar code. We're only changing um, these two lines pretty much. And obviously the, the last one, just small tweaks along the way. Then we have our shared buffer, um, which also is important because within our shared buffer test, then we have our executor service which is going to create our, our uh, new pool thread. So we also create unsynchronized buffer to store the ints <laughs> into it. So we have our, our unsynchronized buffer, which is what we just saw here. So we have our blocking put and our blocking get, which is going to be created here as part of our interface. Um, and then we print out our two lines. And again, we call our buffer interface um, within producer and the same as a perimeter to consumer because we have our runnable command within it. So we have our java.util.concurrent executor.execute. So our runnable command being our new consumer with our shared. And again, we have to use our shutdown and our uh, await termination as well. So we don't have to use the uh, time unit. This is just for demonstration purposes. And you can see now once I run the program and I'll talk through more. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to try and keep this video short because we're going to do a synchronized example in the next and it will be a continuation as well. So um, remember that we had in our producer should should execute first um, and every value it produces should be consumed exactly once by the consumer. <laughs> so um, we have our producer, our producer writes writes, writes, reads, reads, re writes, writes, reads. So it's a little, um, it's a little bit messy <laughs> because it's unsynchronized. <laughs> so, and then we can, we have our, oh, I've got, I've got too many, too many um, things here, which I'll clean up in the next video. 64, we have our producer writes as well. Producer done producing, terminating producer. So the first input, um, the producer writes, here we go. Producer writes one, two, three. Um, before the consumer reads its first three values. So the first two values are lost. <laughs> um, so later five, six, later, whoop, uh, these ones all the way down. Um, these are like empty value here, empty value here and so it's important then when we go through the next example, you can see the difference. So the consumer reads the value one, um, can be read, like this is read twice. The value three even is read twice. Value six, read twice. Value eight, read twice. And value nine, read twice. <laughs> so Access to a shared object by concurrent threads must be controlled carefully or a program may produce incorrect, incorrect results. To, so, to solve the problems of lost and duplicated data, then we use an array blocking queue to synchronize access to the shared object, guaranteeing each and every value will be produced once and only once, which we'll get to in the next video. So please stay with us for the continuation and I will talk through the next, um, the next section in the next video. Happy Sunday. I hope you are staying safe and healthy out there and I will um, post the next video next Sunday. Um, yeah, stay safe. Bye.